Well, guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks. We're going to start the brakes today. I have not cracked these yet to, to see what we got going on inside of them. So we're going to do that today on both sides. It's one of the few systems I've yet to check. And so we're going to do that today. It, there'll be a little bit of disassembly of some linkage here. I've got to take this PTO um, lever off and uh, a few things down here. And then we'll pull these big plates and see how our discs look. You know, my anticipation here would be that there's a lot of gunk and grime and grit and probably a fair amount of rust. But, um, but I expect the disc to be okay. And so uh, we're going to we're gonna find out here in a little bit. You know, the thing with tractors is the brakes are important, but you don't use them a ton. And so I do expect my disc to be in good shape. The discs that come on these are, man, they're pretty thick. So um, it's not likely that I've worn them out, but who knows? I don't know the full history of this tractor. So let's get into that. <music> We got her off. That was a lot of work, but that'll allow us to kind of clean that thing up a bit as well. The next step would be to remove these five bolts. So one, two, three, four, five. So all the perimeter bolts. There's also three other bolts, one, two, and three, that we're not going to remove right now because those hold the whole assembly inside. So we'll remove these and that'll allow us to pull the whole brake assembly out of here. easier than I expected. The other side went very, very well. So now we'll do the left side of the tractor, left side as you're sitting on it. And you can see obviously there's not nearly as much bracketry on this side. I'll take out the adjusting screw and then again I'll remove these one, two, three, four, and five pins and I'll leave these three in. I'll probably pull those off on the bench so that I can get into the housing obviously but I'm really pleasantly surprised for what I've seen on the other side of the tractor. Um, it looked pretty clean and uh, my discs look fantastic. So I think we're just gonna, it's gonna be a clean job, uh, lube everything up again that needs lubed and put it all back together. So really happy with that. I'm gonna put you in time-lapse now uh, when I pull this apart. Once you pull these brakes, the whole housing, these pieces in here can move. So that'll pose a little bit of a problem once we clean all this up and these move a lot easier um, in lining that up. So kind of keep that in mind as well. It might be easier putting this in, assembling it one piece at a time. But right now we're gonna take off these three bolts from the other side. bud so now we can remove that plate 
That inside surface is important. That's where your disc runs. There's one disc. It actually, it looks decent. It does have a bit of wear, particularly on this side, much more so than that side. We're gonna have to pull them apart here and get a look at them. See if it's something I've got quite a bit. I don't know how well that's coming up on the camera. Tilt it just a bit. There's quite a bit of sludge in there. So maybe if I end up ordering new brake parts, I'll new disc, maybe I'll get some new seals because I'm definitely leaking at least ever so slightly from the from the seals around those shafts. This looks perfectly fine. Looks like I'll be able to clean that up. I don't see any deep grooves at all. Should be able to clean that up perfect. Here's our second disc. Sorry, I apologize. My dog is... <laughs> They're harvesting in the field right now uh, in front of the house. And so um, they're making a little bit of racket out there. So he doesn't like that too much. So this one here, again, a little bit of where I've got some wear marks starting to disappear. So I am probably gonna have to look, in pur look into purchasing some new ones. And they have thinned out a bit. So we shall see. I may clean them up and just use them since I won't be using brakes that much. But you can see a lot of crud in here. Again, I'll take the orbital sander and I'll clean all that. So I'll get the other one apart and uh, we'll inspect it as well. Number two. It also has some crud in the base of it. Quite a bit of crud. Let's check out our desk here. So that disc doesn't look too bad on this side. There's usually wear on the inside and yep. So you can see quite a bit. It's quite a bit thinner. I don't know how well that's gonna show up on camera, but it's quite a bit thinner on this disc, the disc that rides on that center section than on the outside. Now I may choose to um, put this, just flip it, but I don't know. I don't think it's probably worth Sparing. I'm just thinking in terms of it's a, if it's a real expensive part, is it worth the the extra braking power? Um, and it may very well be. So here's our actuator. And again, the disc inside here looks fine. I'll uh, clean it up, of course, and then uh, get to sanding on that. And then again, here's our other disc. So this is the right side. So this disc again, uh, towards the center, worn just about completely. There's no more wear marks that I can see. No more wear marks in that. And then the other side looks pretty darn good. So I may choose to reverse those and I may choose not to. So we're gonna see. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this in some diesel fluid and we're going to clean all this garbage up, get these actuators actuating, and, um, and then we can always put a little uh, lube on this stuff once it's all cleaned up and ready to go and we'll put a sander on that. So right out of there. That is just some thick, like grease mixed with brake dust and dirt. Well, it's super, super tarry, thick. Uh, it's a new day and I've been working on just cleaning things. So I've taken that off. Um, it's got just a, it's a keyed shaft. So it's got a uh, key on the other side. You unscrew that right there. 
So I've just taken that off, cleaned it all up, put some um, grease on it. I use some marine grease um, just because I know this will get exposure to the weather. So we're going to end up, I'm going to pull this plate. So these bolts right here, I'm going to pull this plate and I'm going to change out that seal on So I've got the same issue on both sides. This is a little less lighting, but uh, it's not washed out as much. So this right here, that plate, and you can see the seal back in there. There's also an O-ring back there um, that'll go around that. So we're gonna pull that today so just to uh, get you up to date. I've also pulled this and uh, cleaned all of this stuff out. I did replace those two Zerks at the end just because they were just so full of hard, rock hard grease. So let's get these seals out. Guys, just so you know how to take this part out, it's got a couple pry points, top and bottom little indentations that you can get something behind it. Now, if you had a uh, something you could put on here like a pulley puller, this is a pulley puller, but it's not quite the right size for something like this. These ju are just too thick to get back in there. Now, I can get this back in there now because I've pulled it out some with the smaller ones. So it helps to just get it in there, like I've got here, and then get the other one. And then also that seal. I'm gonna knock that seal out of there because it's leaking. Bearings look fantastic. I'll take you in for a closer look. This is your brake housing. And um, looks really good. Now, once you remove that, because it also that also has the race in it, you have some movement here. So keep that in mind. And then I removed the shims. There was, oh, there's several shims there, probably five or six shims, just thin little shims that go in there. And uh, I'll put those back. I'm just gonna clean them up, get some of the crud out of them, and then I'll put them back and I'll knock that old seal out and put a new one in and change out that O-ring. Then we'll button her back up. All right, so this is the, um, little housing plate that just behind your disc brakes. So again, there's that O-ring. We'll go ahead and yank that out of there. This is a simple O-ring. Easy to remove that, right? And then also, just so you get a better, clearer understanding of those notches. So here's the notches that you're snagging from the front and back. So when I put this um, back in, I'll put it in a way so that these notches again can be um, easily accessed. Now also when you're looking, pulling this off, take a look at your um, race here. This is what your bearing rides on. Just make sure that's not pitted or anything. If it is, then um, you need to replace that. And they're pretty easy to knock out as well. Um, now we've got the seal we need to punch out of there so let's go ahead and get it removed well guys we got our parts in from corvez oliver i'm pretty excited get this job on the brakes done so there's my replacement seal um, pay attention to your seals because looking at this seal it's got a the lip that's kind of sticking out and that actually goes towards the outside of the tractor an easy way to remember is the spring, which is, you can access it, you can kind of see it in there. You won't be able to see it probably on camera, but that spring is on this side and that spring goes towards the inside of the tractor, towards the transmission. So just keep that in mind. So now what we're gonna do, we got some new O-rings as well, so they'll go around the outside. But I think first what we'll do is we'll press the, um, the 
seal in, and then we'll get the O-ring on, then we'll bolt this one back up, then we'll take the other one off and re replace it exactly the same way. I won't videotape that one, um, just know that it's exactly the same. There's no difference on the other side. Now I have taken some time to clean all this up and I've cleaned the housing up. I've cleaned the brakes up. We've got new discs. You can see the difference in height just from the wear of these old discs. And I could have probably gotten away with using these, but, but as cheap as these are, it's just worth replacing and starting new. So two per side, so you need four of those. So let's get started. Let's get this over to the press and we'll press this sleeve in, this seal in. So we'll make sure the spring is towards the inside of the tractor. I've already put some sealant inside there. So we'll just drop that down in there. And I'm gonna use the old seal just to allow me to put some even pressure on that and then I'll use that. That should help us. So we've got her pressed in. The spring is towards the inside. You can see uh, that sealant squeezed all the way around it. So all I'll do is I'll just grab a tissue and just wipe off that excessive stuff. We don't need it, obviously, but that ensures that I don't have anything leaking around it. Probably completely unnecessary, but certainly won't hurt.
Well, guys, we've finished, finally. Got all the bracketry put back in place. I've put a light bit of grease on everything. Um, new cotter pins. I'll replace some of these washers just because I don't like doubling up a washer like that. It needs to be the right size washer, right thickness. So I'll do some of that. Right now, the brakes are so tight that I've got these three bolts loosened up just slightly um, on both sides. And I've got a wire holding the brake pedals up because if not, I cannot turn this or I cannot move this tractor. The wheels just won't, won't turn. It's that tight. Um, obviously, I had quite a bit of wear on the old brakes. And, um, you know, this adjustment um, bolt down here isn't loosening it up enough. So, and essentially, you've got to wire this up because normally it would have springs right here that would hold those pedals up for you. So anyways, I'm sure there'll be some break-in period on those. But just to recap, we disassembled our brakes, pulled everything out. We had two discs on each side and one actuator plate in the center. And we've replaced the two discs. We also, while we were in here on the brake shaft, um, we've replaced the seal that goes on there, as well as an O-ring on both sides. And you can get that from probably a lot of vendors. I usually go through Corvez Oliver um, just because they've always been good to me and their prices are really reasonable. Um, but there's other vendors I use, Maubach and Ohio and um, Ag Kits First, um, Agri Parts. I don't know. I, I've used quite a few, even eBay at times when I can't get something that I need. Um, so anyways, guys, now that the brakes are completed, We'll move on to the next project. I'm not 100% sure what that's going to be yet. I've just been slowly going through all the different systems of the tractor, and um, I'm, getting, I'm getting down to where I don't have a whole lot of, of things to go through at this point. I'm assuming my transmission's good, though I haven't actually shifted into gear, or I haven't actually moved it on its own power. When I did start it up, if you remember the very first um, video where we fired this thing up, I never moved it and just fired it up because I wasn't hooked up to radiator and uh, I didn't want to mess things up. So, but I'm assuming the transmission's fine and I'm assuming my hydraulic pump is fine. So we'll find out if it's not and if, we, if it isn't, we'll repair it then, no big deal. But right now, I think maybe the next thing I might try to go to is, well, I'm gonna do a quick adjustment on my PTO clutch because I haven't done that since I put the new PTO clutch disc in. And then uh, I think I'll be turning my attention to the power steering pump. So hopefully I can get the parts in for that. If not, I'm going to have to kind of figure out how to do an aftermarket pump. So anyways, guys, I appreciate everybody watching. I hope this has been a help to you. And uh, if so, leave a comment in the, in the comment section. Hit the like button. And uh, I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks. God willing, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.